Hi, my name is Alfred Brock. I'm with the Wayne Focus, and today we're continuing with our series about drug abuse and addiction. And today we're going to be doing another part of the series called Drugs, Brains, and Behavior, the Science of Addiction from material provided to us by drugabuse.gov. And there's going to be a link to this material that I'm going to be reading through to you today at the bottom of this uh, um, video and also associated with any social media that's distributed with this. So uh, today we're going to be talking about addiction and health. What are the medical consequences of drug addiction? People who suffer from addiction often have one or more accompanying medical issues, which may include lung or cardiovascular disease, stroke, cancer, mental disorders. Imaging scans, chest x-rays, and blood tests show the damaging effects of long-term drug abuse throughout the body. For example, research has shown that tobacco smoke causes cancer of the mouth, throat, larynx, blood, lungs, stomach, pancreas, kidney, bladder, and cervix. In addition, some drugs of abuse, such as inhalants, are toxic to nerve cells and uh, may damage or destroy them either in the brain or the peripheral nervous system. Now the impact of addiction, let me repeat, can be far-reaching. Cardiovascular disease can be caused, stroke, cancer, HIV, AIDS can be transmitted, hepatitis B and C can be transmitted, lung disease, mental disorders can result from them and be worsened. Um, it's very serious. Now, does drug abuse uh, cause mental disorders or vice versa? That's a good question. Drug abuse and mental illness often coexist. In some cases, mental disorders such as anxiety, depression, or schizophrenia may precede addiction. In other cases, drug abuse may trigger or exacerbate these mental disorders, particularly in people with specific uh, vulnerabilities. So in that case, they would be induced, uh, drug-induced cases of anxiety, depression, schizophrenia. Um, that, that seems like a, a splitting hairs, but it's actually very important when we're treating, when the people are being treated by professional doctors, okay? Now, addiction and HIV uh, AIDS are intertwined epidemics, horrible stuff. Now, how can addiction harm other people? Beyond the harmful consequences for the person with the addiction, drug abuse can cause serious health problems for others. And three of the more devastating and troubling consequences of addiction are, first of all, negative effects of prenatal exposure, drug exposure on infants and children. That's just horrible. A mother's abuse of heroin or prescription opioids during pregnancy can cause a withdrawal sim sim syndrome called uh, neonatal abstinence syndrome, or NAS, in her infant. It's also likely that some drug-exposed children will need educational support in the classroom to help them overcome what may be subtle deficits in developmental areas, such as behavior, attention, and thinking. Ongoing research is investigating whether the effects of prenatal drug exposure on the brain and the behavior extend into adolescence to cause developmental problems during that time period. So they're studying that. Um, in the past, uh, this was a, a serious problem with uh, people who are with women who are abusing uh, opioids, and uh, the children uh, would be born normal, and then within 10 days uh, would suffer and 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 possibly die if they weren't treated for um, their their symptoms. The children look normal, but uh, it's very, very, uh, very troubling. Uh, second of all, negative effects of secondhand smoke. Now, secondhand tobacco smoke, also called environmental tobacco smoke, ETS, is a significant source of exposure to a large number of substances known to be hazardous to human health, particularly to children. According to the Surgeon General's 2006 report, now that's, that's, uh, that's 11 years ago, almost 12, the health consequences of uh, involuntary exposure to tobacco, sm to tobacco smoke Involuntary exposure to secondhand smoke increases the risks of heart disease and lung cancer in people who have never smoked by 25 to 30 percent and 20 to 30 percent, respectively. And that's that's some pretty serious numbers. And we're we're going to talk about uh, marijuana later on. But exposing children uh, to the smoke is uh, that's not that's not really nice. Okay, they didn't ask to smoke it with you, even if you need it for a drug or a medicine. Uh, you should do it uh, away from the children. Away from the children. So increased uh, spread of in, uh, infectious diseases is a third, one of the third problems. And injection of drugs such as heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamine currently accounts for about 12% <clears throat> of new AIDS cases. So if you thought that went away, it's still around. Uh, injection drug use is also a major factor in the spread of hepatitis C, a serious potentially fatal liver disease. These are very serious problems that have high costs associated with them, not only financially, but socially and families. Injection drug use is not the only way that drug abuse contributes to the spread of infectious diseases. All drugs of abuse can cause some form of intoxication which interferes with judgment and increases the likelihood of risky sexual behaviors. This in turn contributes to the spread of HIV, AIDS, hepatitis B, and C, and other 
sexually transmitted diseases. Now, one out of three United States AIDS deaths are related to drug abuse. Tobacco use is responsible for an estimated 5 million deaths around the world each year. This is pretty serious stuff. Now, one of the, some of the effects of specific abused substances. Nicotine is an addictive stimulant found in cigarettes and other forms of tobacco. Tobacco smoke increases the user's risk of cancer, emphysema, bronchial disorders, and cardiovascular disease. The mortality rate associated with tobacco addiction is staggering. Tobacco use killed approximately 100 million people during the 20th century. And if current smoking trends continue, the cumulative death toll for this century has been projected to reach 1 billion. Alcohol consumption can damage the brain and most organs. Areas of the brain that are especially vulnerable to alcohol-related damage are the cerebral cortex, which is largely responsible for our higher brain functions, including problem-solving and decision-making, the hippocampus, which is important for memory and learning, and the cerebellum, which is important for movement coordination. Marijuana is the most commonly abused illegal substance. This drug impairs short-term memory and learning, the ability to focus attention and coordination. It also increases heart rate, can harm the lungs, and can increase the risk of psychosis in those with an underlying vulnerability. Only, that's a lot, we'll be talking about that later. Prescription medications also can be a problem, including opioid pain relievers such as Oxycontin and Vicodin, anti-anxiety anti anti sedatives like Valium and Xanax, Xanax, and ADHD stimulants such as Adderall and Ritalin are commonly misused to self-treat for medical problems or abused for purposes of getting high or especially with stimulants improving performance. However, misuse or abuse of these drugs, that is taking them other than exactly as instructed by a doctor and for the purpose described can lead to addiction and even in some cases, death. Opioid pain relievers, for instance, are frequently abused by being crushed and injected or snorted, greatly raising the risk of addiction and overdose. Unfortunately, there is a common misperception that because medications are prescribed by physicians, they are safe even when used illegally or by another person than they were prescribed for. We also have inhalants, which are volatile substances found in many household products, such as oven cleaners, gasoline, spray paints, and other aerosols that induce mind-altering effects. They are frequently the first drugs tried by children or young teens. Inhalants are extremely toxic and can damage the heart, kidneys, lungs, and brain. Even a healthy person can suffer heart failure and death within minutes of a single session of prolonged sniffing of an inhalant. We also have cocaine. It's a short-acting stimulant which can lead users to take the drugs many times in a single session, known as a binge. Cocaine use can lead to severe medical consequences related to the heart and the respiratory, nervous, and digestive systems. It should be noted that nearly half of high school seniors report having used marijuana and 6.5% are daily marijuana users. Amphetamines, including the methamphetamines, are stimulants, powerful stimulants, that can produce feelings of a euphoria and alertness. Methamphetamines' effects are particularly long-lasting and harmful to the brain. Amphetamines can cause high body temperature and can lead to serious heart problems and seizures. And we have MDMA ecstasy, also known as Molly, which produces both stimulant and mind-altering effects. It can increase body temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, and heart wall stress. MDMA may also be toxic to nerve cells. We have LSD. It is one of the most potent hallucinogenic or perception-altering drugs. Its effects are unpredictable, and abusers may see vivid colors and images, hear sounds, and feel sensations that seem real but do not exist. Users also may have a traumatic experience and emotions that can last for many hours. Heroin is a powerful opioid drug that produces euphoria and feelings of relaxation. It slows respiration, and its use is linked to an increased risk of serious infectious diseases, especially when taken intravenously by needle. People who become addicted to opioid pain relievers sometimes switch to heroin instead because it produces similar effects and may be cheaper or easier to obtain. Steroids, which can also be prescribed for certain medical conditions, are abused to increase muscle mass and to improve athletic performance or physical appearance. Serious consequences of abuse can include severe acne, heart disease, liver problems, stroke, infectious diseases, depression, and suicide. 
And of course, there's drug combinations, a particularly dangerous and common practice is the combining of two or more drugs. The practice ranges from the co-administration of legal drugs like alcohol and nicotine to the dangerous mixing of prescription drugs to the deadly combination of heroin or cocaine with fentanyl, which is an opioid pain medication. Whatever the context, it is critical to realize that because of the drug-drug interactions, such practices often pose significantly higher risk than the already harmful individual drugs. For more information on the nature and extent of common drugs of abuse and their health consequences, go to NIDA's website, NIDA's website, to view the popular research reports, drug facts, and other public publications. Thank you for uh, listening today. I wish you well, and we work together. I'm going to win this war on drugs. We're going to have a fine community, protect our families, our friends, our neighbors, ourselves. Have a great day.